Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, a place that some people dream to get away from, an environment that drains the soul. 80% of the Haitian population lives below the poverty line. For them, each day is a game of survival. How can we bring light to a place of hopelessness? Imagine waking up next week in Port-au-Prince, the largest city and capital of Haiti. To feed your family, you will need to gather what little money you have and travel north on National Highway 1. Most people travel in ornate, overloaded buses known as tap-taps. The ride is hot, cramped, and bumpy. The roads in Haiti are decaying. Heavy rain runs wild, unbridled because of deforestation, carving deep, varied ruts, making travel painfully slow. As you wind up and out of the city, you get a clear view of the rough, stacked blockhouses filling every available space. For safety, many of the homes and offices are fortified with tall walls and coils of barbed wire. The condition of the country in general makes the people develop a kind of phobia, fear. Fear to be kidnapped, fear to be killed, fear to be robbed. You, like many others, are traveling to buy charcoal made from the few remaining trees growing on the island. Haitians use charcoal for cooking, and after returning to the city with your small supply, the afternoon will be spent trying to sell these small charred scraps of wood to your neighbors. Haiti shares the Latin American island known as Hispaniola with the Dominican Republic. The red and blue flag pulls from the design of the French tricolor flag, giving insight into Haiti's independence from France in 1804. Many current Haitians are descendants of captured and enslaved Africans and now speak Creole, a hybrid of French and certain African languages. Despite current conditions, many people in Haiti are deeply spiritual. They are looking for a better life, and because of that, they pray a lot. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is thriving in Haiti. More than 300,000 members worship in more than 400 churches across the small country. Church buildings are filled to capacity, and many have three or more services each Sabbath to accommodate the unprecedented growth. Pastors are stretched thin across the population, but church members in Haiti are working tirelessly to help push forward with growth. Vernique is one of many church members who preach at evangelistic campaigns in Haiti every night, four months out of the year. Today, she finished her most recent campaign and had the joy of witnessing 20 of her students being baptized. I am happy because those people are in the world, but now they have the same hope that I have, so I am really pleased. She starts her next series tomorrow night. In recent years, your 13th Sabbath offering has helped build a seminary, hospital, chapels, and has expanded the listening area of the Voice of Hope radio station across Haiti. Thank you for your faithful support of the 13th Sabbath offerings. Please continue to keep the people of Haiti in your prayers. Because of you, Adventists here are bringing hope to the hopeless, giving them the joy and fulfillment of knowing Jesus as their Savior.